Okay, so everyone, let's get the ball rolling. Why we need to upgrade to Dynamics 365? How do we get there? What are the checklists or what are the things we need to consider in order to migrate from on-premises to online? And what are the methodologies available at our disposal to move forward from on-premises to online? At the end of the day, if we are moving from on-premises to online, we are going to a cloud platform and what Dynamics 365 has to offer that is not available on price. It's features like employee empowerment with different business effectiveness shoots that are available online only, plus customer engagement with sales insights and other stuff. Apart from that, if we are moving from on-premises to online, there has to be definite cost saving. We can save a lot of money over licenses, storage, and cutting up overhead costs with respect to the infrastructure. And at the end of the production, if we have time, we would also discuss integrations, IoT, and Azure AI that could enable your business to go to the next level. In the last 10 minutes, we will take up your questions and discuss whatever the queries you have. Why update? The primary question is, what is the current scenario at this given point of time? At the current world, CIM 4.0 and CIM 2011 are end of support. 2013 has only few months left for the support to go offline. So it becomes more practical for these versions to move to Dynamics 365. And if you take up my opinion, if you are having 2016 on premises, then also moving to on cloud makes sense. Why? Because Dynamics 365 or the cloud version offers you a lot of benefits with respect to the cost cutting. Things like there is no infrastructure or hardware cost. Apart from that, you don't need to upgrade your server on a timely manner. You don't need to hire resources for maintaining the servers. And Microsoft offers 99.9% .9 service level agreement with financially backed. So your server are not going to go down. You would have your Dynamics 365 connectivity at virtually any given point of time. You don't need to call up your system guy and say, hey, why am I unable to access my CRM? or I am unable to virtually access anything or apart from it also. On the other side, if we are not upgrading at all, what are the downsides? Microsoft is not providing any of the future updates as of now. So uh, if you have developed certain plugins and stuff like that, which are not supported with the new versions, you have to deal with your own side. Apart from that, the learning path when we upgrade to a higher version becomes increasingly harder for the employees that comes in as the version difference increases. On top of it, if we are at CRM4 and we need to move it to Dynamics 365, the upgrade part also increases, so does the cost of it. Now, migrations or moving from one environment to another, it's always a pain, it's always a hard task. But if we want to move forward, we have to enter the pain. But to reduce that path, we have a formidable checklist that can help you do your things very easily and put all the things in order without glitching the existing system at all. Here is a simple checklist that has to be followed to get the ball rolling. First, all the on-premises users, PUs, teams, other objects, which are connected to the system, even if the user have left your current organization, that has to be mapped with the online instances. If there are records that are obsolete, that can be deported, that can be removed, but if the ownership is still with the uh, existing business unit, that has to be cross-mapped on an online unit, just to make sure the records can be transferred. Migration of the your custom built things, like plugin, workflows, JavaScript, if they are supported in the latest version, it can be moved. But a detailed checklist has to be planned for them. And whatever the plugins, workflows, or JavaScript have to be dropped, they need to be rebuilt. And if you are having a legacy system, there are a lot of checks and balances we would have created with different methodologies. Right now, they are supported by business rules and other out-of-the-box workflows and other stuff. So those functionalities can be removed and we can utilize out-of-the-box customization to serve yourself better. And hence, 
the system performance and make sure the future compatibility becomes easier. And any legacy system cannot be built without IFC solution or some kind of third party managed solutions. So if these solutions are available on online, we can find a replica of that, we can utilize it, else the managed solutions might have to be dropped and their functionalities have to be recreated. SQL Bill is reports that were supported in on-premises and online environment, they are not working. For that, we have a workaround with respect to Fetch XML and Power BI. So the report which have been built with business intelligence and SQL have to be converted in either XML based or the Power BI reportings. And Power BI is out of the box supported for Dynamics 365. Outlook integration is the best supported in Dynamics 365 with App for Outlook that we are going to see and the live demo moving down the line. Mobility, if required. In earlier versions, we used to have separate forms with, for online and for mobility. But with Dynamics 365, it has a build one, deploy anywhere concept. So your main form can be replicated on your mobile as well. So that reduces your effort to maintain a separate form for the mobility. But if you still insist, we can definitely take a look on the mobility features and make sure that gets replicated. Let's see the method one for migrating an on-premises version to online. Here we move with the concept that you have a dynamic CRM 2011 version. In order to move it to dynamic C65, we need to make sure the customization of 2011 are set right in the format of 2016. In order to do that, we need to validate all the customization, including JavaScripts, workflows, plugins, or Silverlight components, whatever have been developed, that they are supported in 2013 or not, that can be utilized with custom tools available from MS or while directly importing into 2013 environment. How do we do that? Once the basic cross check is done, we have removed the unsupported components. We can create an empty shell environment of 2013 just a base system in which we would import the database from 2011 and then import the complete organization of the 2011 imported database into 2013 server so that the customization of 2011 gets into the form of 2013 and they are ready to move forward similarly in the next version we need to pull in the database of 2013 that has been recently upgraded with respect to the customization from 2011 to 2015 and so on. Moving down the line, once we reach to 2016, while pulling up all the customization that are in the form of 2016 with the 2015 database design into the 2016, we have all the customization we need at one point. At this point, we are ready to move to the stage two, wherein we can get the new instance of Dynamics 365 established on cloud and move all our customization from CRM to the cloud environment. And remember we just discussed if there is a glitch in moving the, these customization from 11 to 13 or 13 to 15, those customization have to be dropped. That means they need to be rebuilt. So we can rebuild those customization and configuration plus whatever your feature requirement is we can recreate them and once these functionalities are stabilized with your existing customization plus the new code you would have a fully validated checklist that says hey this environment has all the features that my organization is going to need now the question arises is we still have our data relying on 2011 database that's a production system that is still working what do we do in this system, we need to connect it to any kind of third party packages like Scribe, or if there is a high amount of data, we can definitely utilize SSIS to pull out the data from the existing system, get it connected and push it to the cloud environment. Now, this moving this complete package of the CRM 2011 to cloud, it's not a one click job. As each and every record that exists in 2011 has to be recreated on on-cloud environment, one by one, point by point. Hence, we need to validate the data as it goes through. 
as the amount of data is high, it usually takes about seven to 15 days of time to move the complete data, the legacy data to the cloud. So assuming we lost about 15 days of migration, but the system, the production system is already running. So the data is getting updated and modified regularly. So we need to go to the next phase, next phase of the differential migration. Inside this differential migration, whatever the data that got updated or modified in these last 15 days, during which the legacy migration was taking place, we would select only that data and push it to the online environment. Once we have all the data and all the customization at one place, we can validate everything. And that's where you reach your golden distance. Now, this is a fairly long process and it is only feasible if your base environment, the CRM 2011 environment was developed utilizing best practices, best practices I'm assuming utilizing 80-20 rule as 80% of customization and configuration, whereas 20% involves JavaScript, plugins, cellular light, and what, what not, all other things. So in that scenario, it makes sense, pull out all the customization and put it at one place. If the system is developed with a lot of silver lights and a lot of JavaScripts, and it's not following 80-20 rule or the other way around, it's adv advisable to go for the method two which talks about with the initiation of the Dynamics 365 environment. Let's see how that method works. In, that, in this method, we will start at the very first point from Dynamics 365 instance with no data and no customization whatsoever. We start up fresh, build all the customization and configuration that suits your need. Once you approve that, yes, I have all my functionality that is needed, can validate it, and the second spot, which we talked about in the last step as well, you would have any on-premises version, be it the CRM 4, be it CRM 2011, 13, 15, or 16. We can pull the data with the available connectors and push it to the on-cloud environment. Once we establish the connectivity, you validate all the data and functionality, we reach the code limit. These are the basic two methods available for migrating the complete data from on-premises to online. So if you'd like to shoot up any questions with respect to migration, we would be taking up at the end of the session all the questions at once. Once we have reached to the on-cloud environment of Dynamics 365, it has a lot of things to be offered in terms of integrations as well. There are two uh, three kinds of integrations available out of the box with a few connectors and adapters and third with a self-developed with an application scripting and programming. Here is a look of all the out of the box systems available with Dynamics 365. Few of them are only available in the cloud environment. Things like social engagements, field services, gamification, voice of customer, project services are right now an only online environment. If these features does not suit your need, we have Equila, document signings, other things. These are third-party apps which have inbuilt adapters. You install the adapter, do certain configuration, and things get started. rolling. If this still does not cover up your functionality needs, we can definitely build our own packages with .NET, JavaScript, and other available methodologies. And we can communicate to things like BizTalk or any other system as you need be. Maybe it's MuleSoft or Quick, uh, QuickBooks or just about any application you need to. Apart from this out of the box adapters, few custom scriptings and uh, adapters available, I would like to discuss one thing over here that Microsoft Flow, one of the better feature which is very underutilized right now. Here is the working scenario of a flow, wherein a file gets created inside a Dropbox the moment the flow detects a file has been created at a particular location, it creates a case inside the system, your MS CRM standard system, where a SLA gets fired and accounts get updated. We, uh, the system uh, administrator resolve the case. Once the case gets resolved, the message is getting sent out. The moment the case gets resolved, it, it gets invoiced to the customer and the updated file goes back again to the Dropbox and the system flows on. So this is just an explanation how an MS flow can connect to Dropbox, 
third party system, invoicing, thereafter moving to an SMS system, retaining file back to the Dropbox, and so on. Apart from that, there are n number of connectors right now available with MS Flow, and this is ever expanding. Here is a look of a lot of connectors with Gmail, Google Drive, Twitter, whatnot. And these connectors are keep getting expanded everywhere. One important point I would like to uh, get you guys to attention that we were lacking in a feature of scheduling earlier. MSCR flow gives you a feature of scheduling as well. As the integration goes through and migration path come, I would like to, to call in Bala who would be taking you forward down the line with the slides of employee empowerment and customer engagements. Hey Bala, it's all yours. Thank you, Babik. Uh, good day to everyone. Uh, I'm going to take you to the tour of learning what you can do in Dynamics 365 once you have successfully migrated. Migrating to Dynamics 365 online is just not a technical migration. There are way many things to enjoy as out-of-the-box features without any coding. Most of such features are predominantly available in cloud version of Dynamics 365. We have picked up two such features, two specific areas, which would pretty much suit for any business scenarios. Let's focus on empowering the employees. Empowering the employees. One of the most important objective of rolling out a Dynamics 365 implementation or any CRM implementation for that matter, we have to evaluate how the application is going to empower the user to increase the productivity. In other words, business users should feel that Dynamics is helping them to be more productive rather than overhead. We have prepared a small user-friendly matrix sample, which you're seeing right now on the screen, just to give you all a realistic feel of how these features will look like and how a business user can make use of it to increase the productivity. I'm going to switch from this PowerPoint deck to Dynamics screen. The first feature that we're going to talk about is uh, an Outlook related feature. So let's go ahead and talk about like um, the Dynamics app for Outlook. So any business user or an account exec who's taking care of their existing accounts, pretty much they start their day in life in the uh, dynamic in the Outlook. So they collaborate using Outlook. They fix up an appointment using Outlook. So the day in and the day out starts and ends in the Outlook. So there is an interesting feature that we are going to talk about is called as Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. This is a lightweight app and a replacement for Dynamics CRM Outlook client. The Dynamics CRM Outlook client was an old version of uh, the Dynamics CRM for Outlook and it is a thick client and you need to install it manually. So this is a lightweight app. You don't need to install this app. Dynamic CRM Outlook client, which was used in the past, is going to be deprecated soon. If any of your organization is still using Dynamic CRM Outlook client, it is a high time to replace. One of the important problem statements that got resolved in Dynamics 360 app for Outlook is Outlook crashing issues. They use the maintenance engineers or the support engineers who are in the call, who are experiencing the Outlook crashing issues using the dynamic CRM Outlook client in the past, will no longer need to worry. All those issues are resolved because it is a lightweight app and no overhead. The next important problem statement is primarily with the Outlook, the Exchange mailbox, getting synchronized with your uh, Dynamics 365 system you get another important nice feature called as folder level tracking. So if you see this, you have multiple folders created over here. And by mapping these folders to the dynamic CRM objects, by simply dragging and dropping to this folder, it will also start tracking automatically. The benefit of the folder level tracking is all about uh, even the business user while on the road using the Outlook app using the Outlook app uh, for managing their emails, simply dragging and drop, dropping the email into the respective folder within the Outlook mobile app, they will be able to track the emails. This is such a great feature and uh, this folder level tracking really helps the end user to rock in terms of 
uh, tracking their emails on the go. They do not need to wait for them to come back to office and do such kind of a tracking related activities. The next feature that we're going to talk about is the Excel online. So the screen, what you're seeing right now is a very familiar screen, which is my active contacts. So Excel online, business users pretty much loves to work in Excel spreadsheet. And some of them are really masters in using Excel. Excel online, what you see here, export to Excel, and there is an option called as open in Excel online. This feature gives a great ability to work on dynamics record in Excel directly uh, by increasing their productivity. So if they want to change multiple records, update multiple records uh, in one shot, they can just come here, simply update all the values in this Excel spreadsheet, click on this button, takes them to save all the changes back to dynamics. So this will help the business user work proficient in Excel, even for creating a pivot tables and do some magic, store this as an Excel template and make use of it for their presentation and management purposes very easily. The next interesting feature that we are going to talk about is SharePoint versus OneDrive. So what is the dynamics basically have a very good integration with SharePoint, which is uh, very well known to every one of us. What it helps, it helps in storing the document in context with the business record. But there are some problems that we have been constantly bugged by the business users. Like, is there a way to protect this document to be viewed only by the owners? The answer is no. There is no security inheritance between Dynamics and SharePoint today. So what happens here is, in this use case, I am the owner of this particular business record. Bavik may have a read access to this record because my CRM application has been designed in such a way that any record by seen, can be seen by anyone irrespective of the owners. So if Bavik is going to access this World of Dynamics Brazil record, he can access all of these documents that are uploaded here. So what happens here is once he can access this document, he can even check out, modify, and then re-upload the document without the control of the owner. So that's when we have a very great problem of making the document uploaded as a private, keeping it confidential. That is not possible. So that's when OneDrive comes into picture. So OneDrive is, uh, has an ability to manage the documents in a private mode. Until you decide to share it to someone, no one will be able to access this document. The other cool feature is this OneDrive can also be managed using your file explorer so if you see here your onedrive whatever the document that you store it in the onedrive location of the respective record it will directly be immediately available in your onedrive location of your file explorer so you can manage this document one of our customer who has pretty much works on the proposal loves this feature a lot and he has really say, uh, talks about like how greatly increases productivity in terms of managing the document and making it available to the other users this sounds like a great feature, and I'm pretty confident your situations will also have this kind of a need. Let's jump into the next Office tool that will help in productivity. The next one we are going to talk about is the Word templates. The Word template is pretty much may sound like a mail merge functionality that you've used in the past, but the mail merge functionality had a dependency on your dynamic CRM Outlook client. Without the Outlook client, you will not be able to do a mail merge. Here, there are no dependencies. And also, there is a very nice feature called as uh, associating this record with multiple related records. For example, here I have an account summary word template. So when I open up this uh, sample over here, what happens here is you can able to construct a nice document like this. And also, you can associate many opportunities associated to the account, many cases associated to the account. So what does that mean? You can have one-to-end relationship uh, neatly documented in the mail merchant. This is a great uh, uh, saver for us to prepare a nice document, to present it to the management, to present it to your customer about uh, their uh, monthly reports or uh, quarterly reports, et cetera. So it's so nice. And these templates do not need any kind of uh, uh, IT assistance. It's all managed directly by the uh, business users directly. Before I jump into the next feature, let me give you a scenario. Uh, I'm a business development lead. I work mostly on a prospect with whom I don't have any connection with any key contacts. I need to find the contacts and start collaborating with them. 
so the challenge here is how do I identify the contact? So what feature in Dynamics 363 will help me to make my life easier in order to explore, in order to make a research on a specific organization, learn about the organization and identify some key contact to start collaborating. There is a neat feature called as insights, which comes out of the box. And this insight feature gives you a very nice ability for you to go ahead and read about the account. So this particular insights functionality pretty much collects information from various news websites, social media, and their own websites and collects all this information laid out in a nice readable format. So if you want to find a contact, you on here and it will identify all the contacts and you can even select a contact, add it to Dynamics, start collaborating with them, get an introduction and keep moving from there. Such a nice feature. One of our uh, uh, business user pretty much uh, uh, uses this on a day in and a day out basis who really works on a marketing department and pretty much starts his collaboration activities using this insights a lot. The last feature on the productivity tool that we are going to skim through is OneNote, which is such a nice functionality. So if you look into this particular screen, we are on the activities pane. We have a OneNote tab over here. On clicking on this OneNote tab, pretty much it creates a notebook for us. This notebook is not only accessed only through this, it is also accessed via your OneNote app, OneNote software that is installed in your desktop. Not only in your desktop, it is also accessed uh, via your app in your mobile, OneNote app in your mobile or OneNote app in your tablet. This gives a great ability to continue taking notes where you left, be it on the road, while you're in office, or when you're relaxing in your couch. Wherever you are, you can simply start taking the notes and keep the notes updated for everyone else to see. Uh, that's the greatest thing that uh, I like about personally on the OneNote integration. So now let's go back to the slide to wrap up uh, uh, one of the productivity feature and then jump into the uh, customer engagement scenarios. The one thing is about the gamification. So from a gamification standpoint, uh, um, let's take a customer service scenario. You have 10 customer service representatives are working in resolving customer complaints. Four customer service representatives are high performers. Four customer service representatives are average performers and three customer service representatives are poor performers. Gamification allows to group these kind of resources to appropriate team and you can set up a game and make sure that these games are tied to an activity. For example, resolving a case makes them to score a point. Attending a phone call makes them to score a point. Making a proactive phone call makes them to score a point. So this leaderboard helps them to uh, helps the managers to really monitor how much they are progressing, how who needs to be really motivated. And it gives a clear cut picture about these points and help them to get motivated by even rewards, like send them a gift card if they are the uh, top performer on the particular season uh, for which you have configured the games. So this tool is a great tool for motivating the non-performers to gain the modification and get the highest performance out. So with this feature, let's move on to the uh, customer engagement. So whatever we have seen so far is all about empowering the employees. Now what we are going to learn is customer engagement. So the customer engagement is never definitely needed. Until we get engaged with the customer, it's really going to be difficult to sustain in a business. So we have several features out of it. Uh, let's quickly skim through the voice of customers and portal to begin with, and then we will move on to the sales insights. So here, what you see here is a uh, voice of the customer, again, getting into a customer service scenario. A customer service rep resolves the case. How do we know that the customer service rep has really performed well to satisfy the customer? Do we have a five-star rating for the service? How do I find the areas of improvement uh, from my customer service representative team. We don't have such mechanism in the past. Now, Dynamics 365 has come up with a concept of voice of customer. There's a separate free solution that's available. Just install it. You'll be able to design it in CRM. While you publish it, an email gets triggered by a workflow, and that will have a link to the survey tool, and the survey will give you a very user-friendly experience to collect the survey. All the survey data are easily synchronized to Dynamics back and helps your CSR managers to really act upon the feedback. So that's a nice feature that's available. 
And on the other side, quickly touching back on the portal, most of them know what the portal is. It's primarily a self-service. The world, the customer service is moving towards self-service. If you want to create a case, no one is ready to wait on the phone, uh, stand on the queue, uh, wait on the call for a longer time. Just go and open up a web portal, create a case, and then manage the case automatically. See the live update of such cases, get the knowledge articles, get the self-service help and keep moving. So is that, that has been provided with a free portal services and we can move from there. Uh, now let's move on uh, to sales insights. This is a very great feature. Uh, this was initially called as the relationship insights in the past. Now they are calling it as sales insights add-on because they are keeping on expanding. The three parts that we are going to talk about is the relationship, email engagement, and the auto capture. So uh, the relationship card, let's go into the screens again because uh, let's make sure that we see something on the line. So let's go to the screen. Uh, let's see the dashboard. This is pretty much my landing page. Uh, what you see here is a relationship assistant. Uh, we can also call, this, call it as a carousel. And this relationship assistant is nothing but it's a personal assistant working for me in the background. This essentially reads the data from Dynamics 365 and also reads the data from my Exchange mailbox. It reads my mailbox data. So once it reads the Exchange mailbox data, what happens is the personal assistant who is working behind with the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning concepts, it reminds me what kind of an important email that need to be brought to my attention. What kind of uh, e uh, email uh, that needs my attention. Uh, where uh, if a customer is sounding an upset, it really talks about like a customer is sounding an upset, do you want to react to it? It also talks about like if I'm not contacting the specific contact uh, for a few days or a few months, I can configure even the timeline. It will trigger me that you have not contacted John Smith for a while. If I missed my opportunity close date, it also reminds me. There are way different kinds of configuration available by just clicking on this card. You can decide what card is important for you and it gives you the carousel. It's not only here, this relationship assistant also pops out in the record context specific as well so you will not miss any important things in the background so that's the power of relationship uh, card this card is not only available in your web app it is also available in a mobile app as well which comes as a great handy uh, tool for me to really tell like this is what my next important things are all about now let's talk about um, moving on to the next one is the email engagement uh, again, I have some situations where I wanted to get an email acknowledged by the end customers. For example, my email, I'm sending it to my customer, probably a proposal. So I'm sending a, a proposal email, but I wanted to make sure that my email is acknowledged by them. If without sending a read receipt or marking a read receipt in your Outlook, I get an acknowledgement to know like whether the email has been opened, how many times the attachment has viewed, how many times the link has been clicked. So it gives a very nice feature of how the email is getting engaged with the customer. Once I get the acknowledgement, I can react, I can follow up in a nice manner. And then uh, based on the situations I see here, and then I can really uh, follow up and make sure that uh, I get a good collaboration. So this really helps a lot. It also helps you to set a reminder to, for you to follow up. And it also gives you an ability for sending an email in a delayed delivery as well. So I'm drafting an email overnight, but I want to deliver it at 8 a.m. EST. Yes, I can go ahead and set it up and then keep moving from there. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is all about like the auto capture feature. So let's go back to the deck. I uh, have some uh, thing to show you there. So on the auto capture feature, uh, it's pretty much like uh, uh, what happens here is the customer uh, may, uh, the business development lead actively tracking the email using the uh, Dynamics 360 app for Outlook. But there are some situations where they may miss some important email communications. But Dynamics 365 reads in the background, the AI reads in the background, the Outlook inbox and the Dynamics 360 data. And if an email is received from a contact, it gives an alarm, a kind of a notification saying, hey, you have not tracked this email. This will be in light in color. So you can really uh, visualize this by looking at it and then decide whether to track 
or ignore it. This is one of the very nice feature in one of our customer environment where we have a situation of a 45 day email policy running there. The, for the 45 day email policy, some emails gets deleted. That's an important communication. With this feature, they started loving the uh, feature and then they started using the automatic tracking feature and then which helps them to alarm them. Hey, this email needs to be tracked and it gives the tracking ability. So no longer missing emails to get tracked in the Dynamics 365. Such a great feature on all the sales insights. So these three features, whatever we discuss, is going to really make a great improvement on your customer engagement scenarios. So with this, uh, what I want to do is like uh, I wanted to uh, quickly. Uh, we are running out of time, so we are just to quickly skim through some of our savings. Um, uh, Bobby talked about Dynamics 365 migration. We talked about how you can empower your employees, engage your customers. Now. When you migrate, there are certain things that you please keep in your mind uh, for saving your cost. Number one, licensing. Number two, storage. Let's talk about licensing. Simple concept. You have 300 users. Example, you, take, you have a 300 user base. Divide the 300 users into two parts, management users and the transactional users, the users who really do a transaction operations. So put all the transactional users on the full user license mode. Put all the management user who will only read data from Dynamics. Example, accessing dashboard. Example, accessing reports. That's their, their primary job. Put them into the team member mode. So we have a customer where we have classified these users appropriately and we have saved them $12,000 per year annually on a license cost only. I don't want to really talk about what the license costs because it really varies from customer to customer based upon the number of license uh, relationship they have. So it, to the customer where we work, we have saved close to $12,000 per year uh, using this kind of a classification appropriately. Now let's talk about storage. What the important thing that you guys need to understand is all about storage is pretty much uh, keep this in your mind. Uh, we were being uh, wise enough to store all of our bulk email with bulk attachments in Dynamics as a part of email tracking. Going forward, you are in cloud. You may sh uh, soon shoot up your storage size and then for every story that you make, there will be a cost associated to it. So think wisely. There are some utilities designed by us. We have a free utilities available. We can give, we supply uh, these utilities at a free of cost to our customers uh, pretty much like a, this utility intelligently move the attachment to the SharePoint. The shape moving this email attachment to SharePoint saves a lot of money. It's pretty much like uh, you are the cost of the SharePoint storage is way cheaper when compared to the cost of the Dynamics 365 storage. To the same customer, which I was uh, stating it out by having this utility provided to them at a free of cost, they have saved close to sixteen thousand dollars per year on the storage only so this is such a nice uh, feature that we have as a utility so please uh, reach out to us in terms of uh, getting this utility uh, for you as well uh, so we also have an auditor suite please be mind uh, mindful enough to uh, enable only the audit that are needed fields that are needed for audit because usually that's uh, without evaluating without performing an audit on the audit related fields we uh, reach out to the cap very easily so when you take care of these things you will definitely save 20 to 25 thousand dollars for a huge uh, uh, transactions of emails cases and uh, such kind of things you will easily save 20 to 25 thousand and you can reserve that whole money for your maintenance cost uh, and make use of the effective money in an effective uh, spots uh, at last, just a minute, uh, we want to talk about what NOWS can do for you. Uh, we are having a strong set of uh, Dynamics 365 certified resource. We have functional consultants. We have a strong business analyst uh, sitting in our crew. Uh, so pretty much we uh, deal with migration, upgrading from an on-premise version to an online, integrating with other applications. Uh, we also uh, focus on building customer 360 degree views. Uh, especially we are very specialized in increasing the user adoption we come we perform a discovery session we recommend what you need to do in terms of increasing your user adoption so we have a great experience on that we have a specialized resources who can really do that in a very short time frame and if you are satisfied we can continue our work on that as well so with this uh, i would like to quickly uh, 
uh, hand over this before uh, before we move on to this one uh, let me pause for any questions uh, and then uh, we can talk about uh, uh, the ai and iot what we can do for you in few minutes open for questions hi this is shaina and i'm back uh, we will start with our qa sessions but before that i would like to thank bala and bhavik for imparting your valuable insights with all of us today now moving on to the questions here comes the first question how to obtain the license for crm 2013 1516 migration see i tell it is bah hi all this bhavik i would like to take this question on see uh, 2013 15 or 16 these are the intermediate version of our systems we are going to require for a timely manner and for these reasons microsoft provides you 30 day licensing for any of the system that is available including 2011 and including 2016 so in 30 days you can definitely move your environment to one point to another and the things can be taken care of Thanks. time that is required to spin out the instance and import an organization uh see now it's an tricky question so i can give you a exact time how much it's required to spin out a proper instance of 13 15 and 16 uh depending on your vm server availability and the licensing that you have and all the setups are downloaded at one place but giving an exact time to import an organization it cannot be feasible unless we do a proper discovery session because it depends on the number of users we have how many users are deactivated how many users and business units are to be cross mapped and what are the kind of functionality that can be imported and others have to be dropped so it depends on scenario to scenario organization to organization and the tricky part is within a couple of days we can definitely cover up your discovery session and let you know the exact time that would be required for migrating to our organization thanks can i anyone else here comes the next question are all the system 2013 15 and 16 needs to be working parallelly the state for our answer is no uh, because uh, the question who uh, which are uh, from whomever it's come is uh, it's talking about the method one that is utilized for migration once we move from one version to another from 11 to 13 13 to 15 and 15 to 16 so once we have reached the 16 we just need the customization and configuration from that point so intermediate systems are not required and once we have pulled out the customization from 16 that has to be pushed to the online environment we can remove all the intermediate system we would only need your production system and the online system that has all the customization and the next question is insights does it have any extra cost uh well i think you should take the question on yeah uh so to answer this question there is no licensing cost for insights it's a completely free of solution and you can just download it's just it will take maximum 10 15 minutes and you are there to go and rock okay so the next question is the data that is displayed via insight occupies the space inside the database or not Uh, it's not. It's completely the data is resides in within the insights database, so there is no cost involved. Uh, that data doesn't come to Dynamics. Uh, only if you are going to add a contact, that's the only time an on-demand pull that happens and it gets stored within the Dynamics. Other than that, there is no data stored in Dynamics. This is okay. The last couple of questions. Here goes the last second question. Will auto capture feature occupies space inside the CRM database? a uh, very good question uh, it's pretty much the uh, auto capture functionality that you have seen uh, is uh, a feature that just gives you an alert the data still resides in exchange it only indicates that this particular email has not tracked so until you click on the track button that storage will not directly get impacted into your dynamics so when you track again the email is pulled and it is it will store and it will consume the space okay the next question can folder tracking work with gmail or any other systems apart from exchange uh at this point in time uh the only uh more only thing that is supported is exchange online with server side synchronization as prerequisite uh, so it won't work with any other email uh, clients okay i see that there is one more question and the question is can relationship works with custom entities 
uh, I hope we are talking about the relationship card. Is that correct? Yes. The relationship card at this moment, it does not work with the custom entities, but it does works, works with the, uh, anything that is related to the out of the box, like brand opportunity and contact. So our highest recommendation is when you map your functionalities to the out of the box entities, let's be very careful and uh, let's make sure that these entities are appropriately mapped. Uh, soon we may come up with that, uh, Microsoft may come up with such kind of features, but at this point in time, it is only the out of the box entities. Okay, thank you Bala and Bhavik for answering the queries and with that I would like to conclude the webinar and I'm very grateful to have you participate in our webinar today. I hope all of you had a very good time. We'll be soon sharing with you the webinar recordings and decks to your registered email addresses. In case of any further queries, please feel free to reach out to us at email address mentioned that is info at nowsinfo.com. I'm your host Shaina on behalf of Nowsinfo Systems signing off. Thank you and have a wonderful day.